Hey guys, Chicken Domain, Dubu.com with a Dubu.com forecast update. This forecast update effective around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday, May 20th, 2018. And okay, I'd like to start off by welcoming new followers to our social feeds. Picked up quite a few on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Would also like to welcome back longtime followers who only follow us during hurricane season. Uh, for those new followers, we are primarily a maritime and surf forecast company. Covering the North Atlantic Basin, but we'd like to tell people you don't have to be a surfer or a mariner to follow our forecast because during hurricane season, we consider ourselves a tropical weather expert. Now, we're going to be watching this area over the next three to four days. What you're looking at is the last visible satellite imagery of today of the Gulf of Honduras, and we're going to be watching for an area of spin to work its way in the Gulf of Honduras before lifting out into the Gulf of Mexico. There's been some differences between the European model and the GFS model over the last 48 hours, but it appears the European model has gone on lock now and is going to move this area of low pressure up into the Gulf towards Louisiana. Um, there is some still a little bit of convincing evidence that the GFS may be on the right track, um, the way I kind of describe it is, for those who follow the models, you know, the GFS picked up on the idea uh, two weeks ago. Um, although it was showing hurricane, hurricane, we knew that wasn't going to be the case. Not saying that hurricanes can't happen in May, because they have happened in May before. Um, but it just it didn't make sense the way that the GFS was acting, plus with its history of doing that. So I like to tell people, for when you're looking at the GFS, at least at this time of the year, because it will get better as the season progresses, that when you look at it, throw out intensity, look at the idea of tropical cyclone development. And so now we're getting closer into a real-time uh, forecast period with this area of low pressure. Now you can start to give a little bit more weight to the euro because in that short term, in that 10-day window, uh, euro tends to handle it a little bit better in the beginning. And then once you get inside that five-day window, then you should start having consensus between the two models or a little bit more consensus because the margin of error inside of five days in the model runs start to decrease. Also, sometimes it gets to a point where you throw the models out because you can actually see what's getting ready to happen in the at atmosphere and you know the basic general direction, so it kind of gives you the idea of which model you want to lean towards. And uh, again, nothing in weather is absolute until it happens in real time, but uh, here we go with this third area of disturbed weather we're likely going to be looking at over the next four to five days. Now, we always like to go back to look at what was the last thing we posted on our website, Daboo.com, to see where that kind of verified in the last things that we talked about. And on April 11th, mind you, that's a little over a month ago, we talked about a massive North Atlantic storm and the switch to tropical season. If you guys did not get a chance to read our update back on April 11th, Dubu.com, drop down to the part where we talk about the switch to tropical season, kind of get caught up on it to kind of give you an idea, uh, you know, how we like to do things. But that was on April 11th, and then by May 4th, two weeks later, boom, first area of disturbed weather National Hurricane Center points out on May 4th out here in the Bahamas. Now, this area right here was part of the kickoff of a chain event of what has led us to where we are today. Over the long term, over the last, you know, two, two weeks, that's what's happened here because then after May 4th, 10 days later, here we go with the second area of the 2018 Tropical Atlantic Cyclone Season of Disturbed Weather National Hurricane Center is monitoring. This was over in the Gulf of Mexico, had a 30% chance of development at one time, 40% in five days. It never developed, but did start to increase that pattern of heavy rain. Because of a repetitive nature, this upper level low in here got up here, lifted to the north, started another trough in here, and we had the high pressure ridge and the easterly flow in here, and that started to create, started creating moisture to where we are today. Now, Here's the idea of what's coming up. Here's this area of spin we talked about in the Gulf of Honduras. Here is the first 
which is actually they dropped the designation of it, but here's the remnants of the first tropical wave of the 2018 season. National Hurricane Center uh, analyzed this a couple of the, uh, days ago, and it is just to the east of the eastern Caribbean islands in here. And although they dropped the designation of a tropical wave, you can still see the feature of it, of the main axis of the wave. So just imagine if there was a straight line right here. Here's the center axis of the wave or where the spin is right in here. And so this is sliding off towards the west. And it's going to get in here towards the eastern Caribbean. And you can already see, notice how the lines are like this from southeast to northwest. Southeast to northwest as you get in here. So as this vorticity spin gets up in here, the idea is, is that it'll come in here and slide in up, up underneath and then get this thing going and then up in here to the Gulf of Mexico. Now there's two types of patterns that we talk about. Longtime followers know that we talk about uh, two patterns called uh, uh, round the corner and the hook pattern. And there's evidence of both patterns um, in the satellite imagery of what we're looking at. Now so round the corner works like this. It's an area of spin that develops off Costa Rica in here, moves up to the Nicaraguan Honduran border and rounds this corner and tucks its way in to the Gulf of Honduras. This is the uh, one of the main breeding grounds for tropical cyclone development in here, the Gulf of Honduras. The other one is the hook pattern. And what the hook is, is an area of spin in here in the eastern Pacific, which if we zoom in, we're talking about this one right here, and we'll zoom back out, and then what ends up happening is, is that this gets lifted up, into here. The flow is like this. Although this image is still, this is how the flow is. You've got the winds are wrapping back like this, counterclockwise rotation like this, and the idea is is that a, the, a front, which is up in here, comes in and it kicks it and makes it do a hook and comes through the Gulf of Honduras through the Yucatan Channel. Now normally this hook and this round the corner pattern, climatology tells us up and to the right, up and to the right. Now, if you followed us for last year's hurricane season, you know we talked our two years, uh, two seasons ago, we talk about talked about storms acting in unconventional wisdom, meaning that when climo tells you that it's supposed to go up and to the right, and it goes to the left, you go, wait a minute, it's not supposed to go that way. Because we already know that the flow is from the west to the east this way. We're going to show you why that is and why the European model takes this area of low pressure coming up out of the Gulf of Honduras and puts it over here, over Louisiana, for possibly four to five days. That's what it's showing in the recent model, in the latest model run. So we'll show you that here in just a minute. But for those who follow the GFS or have been looking at the GFS, there's a little bit of credence to what the GFS has been showing. It does not look like the right elements are going to come together to uh, offer a final solution, as the GFS was suggesting, which was a, a strong tropical storm east of the Florida coast. But here, again, is that tropical wave right here. And you've got an area of spin that's right in here. And it's, it's way too north to be the northern extension of the um, tropical wave. You may have seen us talk about how uh, in our post that maybe the northern extension of the tropical wave was going to split off from the main wave access. Typically what that ends up doing is that gets up north of Puerto Rico and slides up in here north of Hispaniola. But that does not look to be the case. However, we do have this kind of flow with the high pressure. So this is working its way this way. And, and if you look here, one, two, notice how it looks like there's a little circle right there. Two, and then three on this back side. So what the GFS is suggesting is that the main wave access of this tropical wave slides in here, gets into here, but because it gets backside to support in here, that's what the GFS sees and wants to pull it this way. That's what Clima would tell us, okay? But the European model is taking the area of spin, moving it up here, and then here. And here's why. We take a little closer look. 
You can see this upper level trough in here. You, there's already like a little slight counter rotating spin in here, but we also have this front that's working down. And so imagine a hook right here. We always talk about watch the tail ends of fronts or long stalled or dying fronts for an area of low pressure to de develop. Well, sometimes areas of low pressure like to migrate towards the front or towards the tail end of the front. So that's what the European model is picking up on. If we look at this imagery right now, you can almost see it coming together. Area of low pressure moves up into here. This is already starting to wrap this way. Notice the curvature in here. So that's going to get the area of low pressure by Wednesday or Thursday into here. And the reason why it wants to come in here, this is dipping this way. This is cupped this way. The natural spot is going to be right in here. So here this is setting up in the latest 850 millibar vorticity map. This shows spin in the atmosphere. And so we'll point out the details to you on this, starting you off with this first tropical wave, which incidentally, the National Hurricane Center has analyzed the second tropical wave of the season. This is just southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. So think about this, since April 11th, we've had... Uh, two areas of disturbed weather monitored by the National Hurricane Center, a third one coming, two tropical waves. I would definitely say that the uh, uh, start to the Atlantic tropical cyclone season is well underway. So going back to the 850 millibar vorticity map, you can see that here is where this tropical wave or the remnants of the first tropical wave is in here. Here's that vorticity spin that we talked about uh, that was in here north of the islands. Go back to this real quick. That's this right in here. That's where that is. Go back to the 850 vorticity map. That's this right here. Here's spin right in here off the South American coast, the northern coast of the South American coast. Here is that spin that's on the Nicaraguan Honduran border. Although the satellite imagery that we showed you, the spin was up in here. This is where it's going to try and start to round the corner in here. So the idea again is, is that the remnants of this tropical wave as it moves in here through the Eastern Caribbean, the spin that's on it will get in here and induce a vorticity spin that will lead to tropical cyclone development eventually up in here towards Louisiana. Again, here is the uh, the front that's coming through or coming down that's going to be a factor in once this area of low pressure gets into the central Gulf of Mexico. Again, we've got that hooking pattern that's in here. These are going to try to marry right through here. Going to switch you over to the latest run of the European model. This is this afternoon's 12Z. Give it a chance here. And I'll advance the model for you. This is real time now going in over the next 10 days. And I'll advance the model that's going into um, Sunday and then Monday, Tuesday. And if you look right here at the Gulf of Honduras right in here, watch right here. You'll see it slides up over the top of the Yucatan Peninsula into the central Gulf of Mexico, and here's where it starts to spin a little bit. Advance the model into you. This is Friday now, and now we have developing low pressure in here just south of Louisiana. That's into Saturday. Now pay attention here. That's Saturday. That's day one. Sunday, day two. That's Saturday and Sunday, Memorial Day weekend. That's Monday, Memorial Day, day three. That's Tuesday, day five. That's Wednesday, day six. That's six days of weak area of low pressure not moving very far. Weak areas of low pressure known to produce copious amounts of rain. Regardless of tropical cyclone development, regardless of whether or not it gets a name or not, there is likely to be heavy rainfall once again coming up over the next 10 days uh, through the southeast region. Uh, we were in drought conditions. Uh, if this happens to verify, um, there probably is not going to be any more drought. I can tell you that. Now, for surfers in the Gulf of Mexico, 
Here comes a strong southerly flow in here. Unfortunately, it looks like it's all on shore. It looked like there was a chance for some surf alert uh, coming in here for you. Uh, we'll have to just see how this all plays out, but it's all on shore out of the south and southwest, out of the south and southeast as this thing moves over towards Louisiana. Now, here's what happens. <clears throat> here's what happens in or why this gets pushed over to Louisiana. And the scary part is, is that it's possible that this area of low pressure gets boxed in. I'll advance the model for you. And as we get into, there's the development right there in the central Gulf of Mexico into a, a 1,008 millibar low. Then it moves up to Louisiana, but I want you to pay attention to high pressure that's getting ready to build in here uh, near New England. And this area of low pressure develops here. We always talk about watch tail ends up fronts or long stalled or dying fronts for an area of low pressure to develop. The other rule of thumb is, is that sometimes low pressure wants to migrate towards the tail or tries to attach itself to the front. And we posted earlier on our Twitter feed that it looked like that the euro was starting to chase the tail of the front and now it looks like it's trying to attach, which it does, but then look what happens here on Tuesday, May 29th, this is day number nine. High pressure now builds in here over southeast Canada, and that kicks it to the left. And then on day 10, moves down in here to Virginia, and it has no choice but to go that way. This high pressure could block this in. This could sit here because it's trapped, surrounded by high pressure. Whether or not it fizzles out or not, I don't know. Um, if it was happened to go a little bit further south and get back over open water, but that's Tropical Storm Alberto right there at 10 days. Now, mind you, inside uh, that 10-day window, uh, confidence is, is not uh, uh, extremely high. Um, the model's going to change, there's no doubt. But one thing for sure, over the last four runs, the European model has been showing the same solution run after run after run. So, anyways, that's all we got for you for now, guys. Sorry for being long-winded. Stay tuned to our social feeds for updates. We're likely to start stepping up updates on our website, Daboo.com. So, stay tuned uh, over the next three to four days for the fresh updates.